We've got a pretty cool project today we wanted to share with you. Jay Clark here from Dirt Bike TV built a fleet of CR250s. This is a 95. Are they all 95s? It kind of 95, 96, the frames, okay. but they're basically all this. It's the same. The only difference from a 95, 96 is basically little tiny changes and the carburetors are different. But that's kind of all out the window. So I call them 95s just because it, it's older, sounds cooler. Now, I don't know how he got his hands on all these 95s, but he built them all at the same time, kind of this, this whole fleet of bikes. Each of them have a little bit different theme. This one was built for us, and uh, it's different. It's it's like doesn't even really look like a CR250 of that era. You know, this was the rocket red kind of pink plastic and all that stuff. So it has a very unique look. Super cool. Tell us a little bit about this, Jay. How much did you get the things for, too? I wonder. Well, some of the bikes I got for free or next to free, and I think the most I paid for one was like 700, 800 was for one, and then the rest were so cheap. They were trash, or they what? were trash. None of them. Only one was kind of together. The rest were all in pieces uh, out of the whole five. And it started off with three, and it turned into five, which was you know big deal. And honestly, I could have done six or seven. I get people hit me up all the time, but the problem is. It, it, you know, as I'll mention when I go over this, it you take a lot of parts. It took us ten sets of suspension to make five. It took <laughs> us nine nine sets of kind of engines to make the five. So engine cases are you know too damaged. Uh, when these things lost a crank or a piston, it wiped out everything, and it would break the cases. Almost every case we did had needed welding somewhere. So we had some welding and buffing and cleaning up. So we did a lot of work on the cases, those types of things that people don't really think about. And the suspension. When people don't change the oil for 20 years, ruins the, the inside of that body, the shock body. The Wait, shaft. you have to change the oil? Yeah, yeah, oh. exactly. So, that, so those are things that people just don't think about. And with these older bikes, that's those component trees didn't. I don't think it was quite as good as some of the stuff today, and it didn't didn't hold up. So, it you know, and so guys will sell you a shock or something. They go, hey, it works perfect. It's like yeah, but then you tear it apart no good yeah and even uh you know suspension guys will tell you even the shims all the parts inside of a shock and fork wear out yep. and so before they break that's when you want to catch this stuff and then just replace everything yeah so is it and, and i wanted to make all the bikes look different i didn't want to make them all white frames and so i wanted to do something different and so the all every each bike has its own kind of look which is really cool and the people that have been following us have, have really kind of gotten into it to see the different bikes so and in the future we'll have all five bikes together but it's fun to kind of go out and shoot everyone and hear these things run and check them out it's pretty cool so what was kind of you know mentioned the cases were probably a pretty difficult thing and some of the engines are from different years but you just pieced them together and made it work what was the hardest part of all of these projects oh man i would say the the suspension and engines because the suspension was just a constant nightmare every time i would get a set over to race tech we'd take it apart and there was always something to deal with and then with the engines again we'd start to put it back together and then it would be another little hiccup the s the rest of the stuff the little parts that I had to go search on eBay, even an axle, you can't buy an, a rear axle for the thing, you know? So you have to go find an axle on eBay. So you're buying this nasty looking axle on eBay for 30 or 40 bucks and you gotta go clean it up, you know? So, but that stuff's all doable. That's the stuff that was a little bit more costly to do. Um, if I was on a regular budget, this probably would make a whole lot of sense to do something yeah. like this. You know? Yeah, and, and I, I I can confirm, cause I'm you're just the, about finished with my 1986 YZ and. When I got the bill for just the stuff we had to buy, right? Uh, I, I kind of and, and that's getting threw a deal. in my mouth a little bit, and that's a great deal. Yeah, yeah. getting a deal. Well, but some stuff you don't get a deal on. If right. you're, if a guy on eBay yeah. has a radiator shroud that you need and you can't find it, like he's got you by the testicles, and you are gonna pay what he wants. Right, right. Or, or you know, or what? Like. Right. He, he, there were some things we I'm like, well, that's the only one I can find. I gotta have it. Right. And and my little trick for that, I would I would message some of those guys and go, hey, I'll give you this. And then sometimes I wouldn't hear from them for a few weeks, and then they'd write me back and then take less. So there's a little bit of tricks on eBay, I guess. So I yeah, you do great like, selling chicklets down at the border or something, right. just just haggling. Right. Bartering. Uh, good job. Well, 
Um, was there like a, a theme or kind of what was the, the concept of this one in particular as far as the aesthetic? Well, I called it Cop Bike for a long time because it was black and white. I called it uh, Cop Bike when it was in the in the shop there for a while. So we called it Cop Bike and then it's it just a little insulting as a fireman. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> All right. But then we added you some, added some red. red. We, okay. Yeah, right. So we added some red and we just wanted to get this different look. And it little, has a little bit of a mix between the, I was thinking of that little bit of that Henry vibe on his Yamaha mixed with the Honda and just kind of, kind of came. And that's what's fun about doing these. I did kind of two that were a little bit more retro and the rest of them are kind of more modern looking. And so I wanted to kind of just kind of come up with something a little bit more modern looking. So, and, but yet to have some old you know, have the Honda logo on there and different things and the retro Weisco logo, those types of things. So that was kind of fun to do something different like that. Well, I remember you and I built one of these. Uh, you helped me build a 92 yeah. CR yeah, that, that I cool. got that actually was Mickey Diamond's old bike. It had a really cool backstory. And when we were finished with it, I went out and rode that thing and I could not believe how good it was. Yep. That, I would tell you, you know, obviously not quite as good as let's say a 24 Yamaha, but if, if I were to go and do lap times, I wouldn't be far off on this thing. Well, it's because you're from you're older. Oh, maybe yeah, you think a young kid could. No, I think that's a lie. Because like a Carson Brown, he could still go really fast. <laughs> right. Hey, we did, these we, are competent motorcycles. Yeah, like they're you know, really good. You know, a funny story is I think we shot that '92 out here, Cheney Ranch. I'm pretty sure. See, your memory's not so good on this stuff. Oh, I thought it was Milestone. I think no. You're wrong. Are you sure? Yeah, it was out here. We're gonna go look at the video. Yeah, we're gonna have to look. We're at gonna the go video. to the tape. Let's look at a clip. <laughs> no, we don't have a clip. Uh, I'll, see, I'll send Nate a clip. I'll see if we can remember where that was. And I guess the point is this: this this era up until '97 was that when they went aluminum frame? Yes. The CR250 from ninety. Two to ninety six. Yes. What a sweet spot. It yeah. was kind of like the CRF four fifty from oh five to oh eight. Right, and we joke Where? around that I, 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 I wish I was one of those guys that had one of those ninety two to ninety sixes. But you know, I, I did. Oh, now you're a guy that has five. No, yeah, I made up for it. Yeah, good job. <laughs> um, and what's what's the plan with these long term? You, I, I've been begging you to test ride it. You're like, nope. We're, we're, we're gonna start it. But we can't ride it. You can ride it in the pits right here. Oh, and you okay. get a little feel for it, like a little heavy petting, and that's about it. But we're going to keep it. <laughs> we want it to be in good shape, you know. So okay. they're going to they're kind of be museum pieces. I don't know that I'm going to keep them. I'm probably going to end up selling them. I need to recoup my money. And my wife is like, how many? She wants it. She hasn't had a new car in years. So maybe we're going to. Do you need a good divorce attorney? Yeah, no. No, you're okay. All right. We're, I think like, uh, Alexis would be solve the problem. Oh, right. Yeah, well, that does do a lot of wonders. That or a Louis Vuitton bag. So, Jay, just kind of take us through what you did and, and some of the details on this thing. This CR250 is a, a work of love, I would say, a passion project, whatever you want to call it. I, I started off building three of these things. It's turned into five. For those that are following us kind of know that. And it just grew. I don't know why it grew to what it did, but this one's a pretty incredible build. This Bengal silver frame is where it starts. We took the frame down had my buddy Dallas help me weld the frame, all the spots it needed to. We do all kinds of little tricks when we weld these things up. So we welded up the frame, got it powder coated from San Diego powder coating, and this, this is a really cool color. Then with the suspension on these bikes, these older bikes, a lot of stuff is all blown, just completely worn out or blown out from old fluids. So what we do is hope we can find the best suspension we can. In this case, we couldn't. This bike is a 2001 yes. Forks on here with uh, 2001 engine even. So we bore out the, the triple clamps for the forks and Race Tech was able to do the suspension for us and Alan Brown actually helped us bore out the clamps which is really cool and the engine from this 01 we bought was able to go right in which is really cool a uh, really cool bike. So when you have these engines even being a 2001 engine in a 95 frame you still have to go through the complete engine and we went through it completely Rebuilt the crankshaft from Andrew uh, Langston, was able to rebuild the crankshaft with a Pro X rod. We rebuilt that, and Brad at Parapros helped us assemble it all with the Weisco piston. And Tom Morgan's one that took care of the cylinder and head for us. It's incredible. V Force reed cage, Parapros again it helped us with the carb, get that all set up to uh, TMR's jetting spec, and got the spec bolts all around the engine. New cables from Pro X. We got the Motion Pro throttle setup, which is really cool. Their new new setup here that works with the ODI grips. And of course, we have our ODI 7 8 bars. These small bars are fine on these older bikes. It's just, just fine. For the clutch, we have the Recluse torque drive clutch. We have the basket, inner hub, pressure plate, all the pieces right there. Works really well. Even little pieces like the brake pedal tip. That's Enduro Engineering makes that brake pedal tip. And I had to drill out the rivets and the old brake pedals when I got them vapor blasted and then tap in new holes for the brake pedal tip 
because all of them are thrashed and you can't buy a new brake pedal from Honda for these bikes. A lot of the plastic we're still able to get through MX Plastics and UFO, we're able to get these older plastics. Clark still makes a tank for these things, which is really cool. So we have the Clark tank on here to, trying to clean up an old tank is a pain. The swing arms were a lot of work to get cleaned up. And those, for the swing arms, what we did is we went through our polisher, Geronimo, guy in Southern California, he polished them out for us. We kind of kind of sat and finished them. Comes out really good. There's a couple, couple of the swing arms did need some welding. I'm sure this one did as well, a little bit of welding. Uh, we have the Pro-X uh, chain and sprocket on here. And our hubs, we have the stock hubs for the wheels. You can't just go buy a lot of wheels that are really good for these older bikes. So what we do is we have, we Cerakote the stock hubs. And the Sano Metal Finishing does that for us. We blast the hubs, Cerakote them, and then build up the wheels. So these old hubs, when we rebuild them, they're as good as new. We got the Pro-X bearings in there. We got our Pro-X rotor, Pro-X sprocket, and we have the Pro-X brake pads and Pro-X rebuild kits. We had to rebuild the entire brake systems on all the bikes we did, and especially on this one. We have the Galfer brake lines, steel braided lines are a really cool feature in this thing. For the pipe, it catches everybody's attention. You got the shorty on there, which FMF doesn't make a shorty. They only have a power core. So we were able to cut those shorter, and Robbie at uh, Robbie's Pipe Repair helped, and NorCal helps us with that. And he's the one that also did the, took the chrome off and cleaned up our exhaust on the gnarly systems as well for the FMF on our exhaust pipe. For foot pegs, IMS still makes a really nice foot peg that looks really cool and not too expensive. We have those on there. And a lot of Cerakoted bits all around the bike from Santa Meadow finishing from our, our brake reservoir uh, to the engine cases, lots of cool pieces. Radiators for these old bikes, there are, I think, some companies that sell aftermarket radiators. They don't ever fit as well. For me, I've never been too happy with how well they fit. So I haven't been that stoked on them. So I like to get the ICW to straighten out and strengthen the radiators that we do have. And we just took our hand, our time and by hand would bend back the ones that were there. Most electronics on these older bikes are still in good shape. So when you're looking for these older bikes, again, the suspension's a big thing that is an expensive item that goes out that people don't really factor for. They just think, oh, I'm just gonna fix up this old bike and it's only gonna cost me a couple thousand dollars. That's not the case. With these older bikes, it can really be really expensive to fix up these things. So you wanna be careful when you do that. Uh, you wanna make sure that you have a good core to work with um, and, and you don't have very much money in it. If you, if you spend $3,000 on a bike to start building a bike like this, it can be really difficult uh, to do that, to, make, to have it make any sense for you. So that's something to watch out for because the bike's not gonna be worth that much by the time you put another five grand into it, so you gotta be careful. So Decal Works still makes some graphics for these things, so which is really cool. So we have our really cool look with our Decal Works graphics. We have our Dunlop MX-34 uh, tires on here, which is really a, a, a great feature for an older bike. A lot of pieces still are available, uh, from Honda, the uh, ignition cover. You can get a nice plastic ignition cover. It's still available, but there's a lot of parts that aren't, and that's where you're gonna spend some time on eBay searching parts out. That's why I say it's best to have a really good core bike before you get too, uh, started into the process. Well, that's a lot of work, Jay. Uh, I don't know that I would have been that patient or that committed to the project. Uh, this one bike of mine alone is, is <laughs> driving me crazy. But it's, it's over two years, I think, on yours as well. Well, we're pushing two years. Yeah, right. I don't really want to talk about it. Um, well, this is beautiful. It's, you know, anybody that grew up in this two-stroke era and really appreciating these bikes, I think looks at this and kind of gets a little smile. And it's definitely different. I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments about the look, because it's different. The silver frame, I actually really like the look of the pipe. I don't know yeah. if it's, uh, I don't know why, but just the, the it looks like almost a works pipe or something. Looks yeah, very yeah. cool. Robbie does an awesome job with those. So, uh, well, thanks, thanks for bringing it out. Thanks for building it, you know, for us. And uh, maybe one day, one day we'll get to ride it. Maybe not. No, probably not. Probably not. So no. Unless you buy it. Maybe get right. more to buy it. And maybe he, maybe, maybe we can start a GoFundMe and we can buy it from Jay, <laughs> and then we can test ride it. Uh, well, thanks so much, man. It's beautiful. Good job. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed at least hearing it. We'll see you on the next build. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future videos, comment what you thought, and share it with your friends.